it comes off the back of, you know, one of the craziest weeks Sydney has seen in a long time. A 29-year-old man stabbed to death the sixth attack in seven days. All these other people shot or have been um, injured. It's totally coming from a different, different playing field. It's left the Hamsey Alamedine war. Is there a new crew out there? Saturday afternoon, I got a phone call from a, an underworld contact and he said, oh, there's somebody has been stabbed to death, basically, in Balmain. And this is Saturday afternoon. And it, it was a little bit different to get a phone call from a guy talking to me about a stabbing. He only ever, he normally rings when there's shootings and they're normally big names. So, And this ended up being a really odd one, didn't it? Because it, it took a couple of days before anyone took any real notice for some reason. Yeah, one of the weirdest things about it was the car. I mean, you know, anybody who's read our stories, watched our TikToks or, or you know, paid any attention to organised crime and what's been happening on the streets of Sydney in the past couple of years will know that we always say the first thing we look for after getting a report of a shooting is was there a burnt out car because that has been the go-to model for shooters in terms of trying to destroy evidence, crucial yeah. forensic evidence. You know, they, they steal a car to use so that it can't be traced back to them and then they burn it out to destroy, you know, the fire will destroy any DNA evidence. But that's usually after a shooting and this was a stabbing it's and then we had a car on fire. The, the stabbing was in Balmain. The car again, was on Which is fire. unusual. Balmain, you know, no. uh, an area now that... Used to be pretty hard. It used to be a tough, tough, tough part of town, Balmain, a long time ago. Now it's gentrified, mm. um, and you mainly full of millionaires. And then so there's a stabbing broad daylight, and as you said, there's um, the stolen car. But <laughs> even more odd is there's a gun in the car. Yeah, you're going to go and kill a bloke. You've got a gun now. Either the gun didn't work, or I don't know. I, I, there was another guy. Um, a guy again in that in that criminal world, he said to me, he said, "Mate, this is personal." He said, "When guys do that, you know, and there's there's the risk, a lot more risk involved. You'd think you could get a lot closer with a knife than you do with a gun. gun. I mean, like that, that's literally the the trouble." And then it's turned out that this guy is um, he's, he's a very low level drug dealer. Yeah, so his name's Danny Radulovic. That's right. Um, yeah. Has think, a few names, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he's a, you know his proper first name is Dijan. Um, I think they called him. Danny the Serb. Serb yeah. Sorry, his mum put something on Facebook and said that that he was known as Danny the Serb to a um, to a lot of people. Uh, low level organised crime links um, is what police police have told us. What that means exactly, who he's linked to, we're not quite sure at this point. But it, it's it's quite interesting because it comes off the back of you know one of the craziest weeks Sydney has seen in a long time, and largely has led to the creation of this, you know, new police task force Magnus. Police! FBO! Open the door! Which is intended to to not only investigate um, these recent shootings. I mean, it'll be interesting to see if this stabbing now comes into it too. Like, you know, for the last two and a half years, we've all been transfixed, obsessed, or just, you know, constantly reporting about the Alamedine Hamsey wars and the Comanchero involved. And now in the in the last couple of weeks, the the victims have no serious links to those people. Not to say that they're not peripheral. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a senior cop yesterday and he'll go, you know, every drug dealer or supplier, you know, we go through their phones and what's misleading is they'll have a phone number for somebody who's connected to somebody who's connected. Mm -hmm. So he said, and that sends them down rabbit holes. But we've had a lawyer shot, a defence lawyer shot. I mean, he survived, Mum the bass. Mm -hmm. Now... That's um, a really rare. Let's take it back, I reckon, yeah. um, back to May 22 this year. And I remember it was about four in the afternoon and I got a call um, saying there's been a shooting at Elizabeth Hills. Ah, uh, that's, yeah. And first question was, where's Elizabeth Hills? Because it's... <laughs> it's, it's a newish suburb in, it is. in South, in, on, near on, Liverpool. Yeah, right on the outskirts of Sydney. Um, and I said, is it fatal? And they said, well, yeah, he's been shot in the head. And you go, geez. And then, then there's the go-to. There's a there's <coughs> a burnt out car nearby, right? And then you go, wow, okay. So this is obviously premeditated, organised. Um, we found out the the guy's name is what twenty four, twenty five was Marvin Araya. And surprisingly, hmm. to, like he's, he's he's been executed, organised crime style. Yeah. 
not a cheapish sure to hit. He's got hardly any criminal record. No. But you've then discovered that he had some links to a well-known commentator. Yeah, we we did. We discovered he had links to a man called Alan Moradian. Um, when we found that out, we went, wow. Alan Moradian's uh, one of those figures, I guess, um, who we probably don't know a heap about other than the fact that he is big time. It's is funny. that a fair That's, comment? Yeah. He's the sort of person that nobody would know then. No one outside of the criminal milieu would know his name. You mention his name to any gangster, senior cop, and they go, one of the big players, mm. one, of, one of the biggest players. And then like he ends up shot in Bondi Junction. Now, all of a sudden, Sydney got really, you know, up in arms because they dared to come into the eastern suburbs to shoot people, and which you know, you know, murder has no boundaries. No, that but, that morning was crazy, wasn't it? You know, it was, and it, that's again. But it was it's the way Sydney reacted. I I think because all of a sudden you had you had the ABC and other people interested because this happened to be in Bondi Junction and mm. not in southwest Sydney. A prominent member of Sydney's underworld has been shot dead in broad daylight near a major shopping centre in Sydney's eastern suburbs. Which is a little bit, I don't know, it just seems a bit snobbish to me in a way. But You're saying it wasn't just us writing about it? No, that's <laughs> right. So, so that, but that murder was a, it was a huge, huge murder. And then, um, uh, then you had another outrageous couple of weeks later, you had two guys bursting into a barbershop barber yeah. and shooting two guys. In Marrickville. In Marrickville on a Friday afternoon. Yeah. Now that, again, now the, that was a, a big shooting. Then you had three young people shot, one dead on a Saturday night or you know, Sunday morning, two o'clock, uh, out, is it Greenacre? Yeah. In an industrial area. And now two of those people, the bullets, obviously it was one target and the young man died who, mm. and then the, one of the bullets went through and hit, hit the young couple who the police think were just there incidentally. Com completely innocent. Completely innocent. Uh, then you had a, another guy. Who, yeah, Ferenc Stemmler. Yeah, and found dead in the street. Canterbury. In Canterbury. Yep. Shockingly, and there was shocking images of that where there were school kids walking past his body, which hadn't been covered at eight in the morning. Mm. He was hit at two. In effect, we had at one stage, we had five shootings in five days, as well as well, five people shot in five days. Yeah. Then we still had Meridian and a, and a couple of others. So police are now trying to see if there's any links. And, you know, you talk to them and what they're saying is there's possible links, but this is totally what they're saying. It's apart from maybe Meridian, all these other people shot or have been um, injured, it's totally coming from a different, different playing field. Mm. It's left the Hams, the Alamedine war. So that's what's, you know, they're, they're, is there a new crew out there? Or, or is this just a cluster of people shooting that are t totally unrelated and that can happen i've seen that happen you know just this kind of like like a, a bloodlust that gets out there someone says oh well, you see you go and shoot him let's we'll sort our, our troubles out that way let's start doing that so that's what the cops have got to try and find out now and i that's why they've got a hundred cops now on this haven't they yeah totally it's i mean as you say this is not in the middle of last year um between when was it uh, April and, and May of last year, we had, and then into June, we had four fatal shootings yeah. and three of them were, were big names. We had Brownie Ahmed, who'd been yeah. warned about a, a bounty on his head and who had, you know, um, been involved in another fatal shooting, what, a, about a decade earlier and, you know, had been uh -huh. a... Um, was uh, it, that's, and that started off a whole separate war in 2016 where four or five were dead. So Brownie was not. Yep. And then, then we had the shooting of Tarek and Omar Zahed. Which is massive, probably uh, one yeah. of the biggest. Yeah, I've Omar seen. died. Tarek was shot 10 times and lived. Yeah. And then a few days later, Rami Iskander. Within days, that was. Yeah. Who was Brownie's step nephew? Step nephew. So clearly they were huge. They were big names. You know, everybody knew who they were. They were, they were very serious, like there were two burnout cars. But here we have this latest um, lot of shootings and and now and this fatal stabbing which has got me totally perplexed um, that's got police thinking there's there's a whole new crew out there mm. creating mischief and that's what they're trying to find out and they might come back and say out of all these incidents these fresh incidents we can only link two or three mm -hmm. and the others just happen to be a bit random um, 
but that's what they're, they're massive pouring their resources into and let's hope i don't know whether it's going to kick off another war i don't know have you so this uh, task force magnus which as you said they've been, they've uh, unveiled last week it's interesting isn't it you know you have um you have the shooting of Marvin Araya in May and then you give it a month or so and there's another shooting of Alan Meridian in, in June and then you go to July and you get three shootings in the best part of, what, five, three or four or five days, days or whatever, yeah. and everybody loses their mind, yeah. right? Um, and so police have to act. The government is, you know, they getting do. asked what they're done. So I was just going to say to you, having done this um, for as long as you've done it. As long as you've been alive. Longer. <laughs> the um, task force Magnus, with its you know 100 new officers and some of the most highly respected yeah. detectives in the whole of the country running it, have you ever seen anything rolled out like that previously by police? Yes, um, and but it was fun. It was one that was done. There was war going on 2016, and they had a thing called Osprey. There had been eight gangland hits. See, I mean, it's just. Goes on all the time. Yeah. There have been eight gangland hits. Three or four of them were rebel bikies. So the police announced this major task force. They didn't have anywhere near the amount of police because what they couldn't tell anybody, that behind the, the scenes they had a strike force already called uh, Strike Force Ale that had been working for two years on a crew of killers that were mm. basically the template for what we're seeing now. And they'd gone around and they'd, well, had done at least four of the murders back then. Where they stole cars, hid them for a year, uh, burnt them out. Um, so it was very similar. Mm -hmm. Like the public was screaming. So they had a big press conference announced this major uh, strike force. Um, but behind the scenes, they were already doing, they were already working on it and did lock them up. Mm. Um, so yeah, I have seen, they do do this. And occasionally. Brothers for Life as well. Uh, Brothers for Life was 2013. Yep. Um, same thing happened there. They they started well. First, they started Apollo, so they do that. You know, when the, when the public screams, they have to be seen to be doing something. Now, I'm not saying this one actually. To be to be fair to the police, I've seen before, like Osprey, when you try and ask how many police were on it, they couldn't give me an answer. They said, "Oh, well, we're not going to. We're not really sure." Mm. Um, same thing with. Um, with Brothers for Life, they were going mm. crazy in 2013. They were shoot there were shootings every night. Mm. Like, well, it's funny because you know we, everyone keeps saying how shocking this is. Yeah, but there's actually never been less shootings in That's Sydney right. than there is right now, statistically. Statistically, yeah. in terms of you know, I, I think I wrote the story on it recently, and I can't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but. This is the lowest we've had in 20 odd years. 20 years ago, there was yeah. like 250 yeah. a year, and now we're down below 50. And I had to do year. it all, cover that on my own. I didn't have the help of you back then. Didn't you? No. no. Oh, I worked Poor hard. You. Poor no. you. But I do remember talking to Deb Wallace, who's head of the gang squad. She yeah. said, My phone would be going every night. Sometimes she said, There were just shootings everywhere and Brothers for Life. And again, they, are, they, all, they had a big task force. They made a big song and dance after there'd been some shootings that uh, had the public really worried. It. Um, but again, when you ask for the numbers, you could never really find out. But this time, they seriously are. They've got a, they've got a, a head of it, a Jason Weinstein, who, you know, very well respected cop. Um, background was he worked in Middle Eastern organised crime squad 10, 15 years ago. He knows all these players. Mm. And then he was head of Raptor. And he literally, they have a, an office set up. So I think it's more than just um, giving the lip to the public mm. i think they seriously oh, no. are looking at all of these potentially separately uh, as a, as potentially being linked i think they'll knock a whole lot out and i think they know that too it was in you were at the press conference yesterday where, where jason weinstein spoke and i think he talked about the fact that you know initially their targets may not be the big names that we he mentioned. called it he called it their labor force yeah, <laughs> like, but but we've seen that before. So and it was I was just thinking because you said look, I think you said um, when Osprey was running they had the Strike Force A, which background. was secretly working, at, which well, no one knew about. No, but they had same thing a couple of years ago with Strike Force Sugarcane. Yeah, you know, that's right. That was intended to take out what police alleged was the drug running arm of the Alan Deans. That I like the how remember back then somebody and poor Karen Webb copped a bit of grief. She said, "Oh, we've taken the head off the snake." They hadn't. You know what they'd actually done? They'd taken the stomach because yeah. that was all the money. Sugarcane took all the earners. They took all their phones. Mm. 
Um, they really hurt. But that had been operating for about a year, year. before it happened. And we, no one knew. It was all we, secret. Totally. So even today, even now, there will be, we know Erebus is another very big task force. That was the task force they created after those shootings last yeah. year that we just mentioned. This one, I, I think, is a little bit more... This is bigger. It's bigger, and they're trying to stomp very quickly and try and find the connections really quickly. Yeah. Because um, they're learning. They're learning each time. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, they're getting better and better. And as those stats would say, you know, the lowest murder rate and, and public place shootings. Like, we used to just have drive-bys every day, every night. That was It was boring, mm. you know? So what we're seeing now, I think cops have got better. At, at, at moving quicker and trying to shut down this so uh, where they go we'll see I'm, I'm sure they'll be kicking in doors over the next couple of weeks mm. and taking out every player even a bit player so that the message goes that you, you're not going to keep going out there and creating havoc on the streets hopefully 